going on everybody on YouTube Steve here with Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com coming back to you guys with another live show and in today's live show we're going to be spying on the competition to see what clothing items are selling on eBay so this is a live show which means we do have the live feed going on right now so if you are on a desktop look over to the right hand side and there should be some people chit chatting in there we'll love if you guys could take a minute right now to hit that like button would definitely appreciate that and if you're not already a subscriber be sure to subscribe to this channel because i'm posting new daily videos and you never know what you could learn. All it takes is one strategy, one tip. There's been times where I've watched videos or I've been a part of a Facebook group and there was one thing that I took from it and I was like, wow, that's gonna change my business forever. And it did, and the same thing could apply here in this live show. So we're gonna be spying on a competition, taking a look at what clothing items are selling on eBay. So it looks like we got a lot of people pouring on in right now, 42, 46. 48, 51 people watching live want to shout some people out. Susanna Hutchinson, what's going on? Green Pastors 1000, good to see you. Miss Beauty 79, John Hardesty, Eddie Willis, Garrett Elsrode, Dash Sweezy, I'm your biggest fan. Love your vids. So Dash, good to see you. Appreciate the love. Nanette, what's going on? Frank Meg, thanks everybody for coming in to the live show. So we're going to be doing a little research with clothing right now because I think it's a great opportunity to make money right now, especially with all the fear that is brewing brewing in the Amazon community right now with all the restrictions that have been happening lately. And if you don't know what I mean, a lot of brands like, for example, Nike, there was a scare a while back with Nikon and Sony, even though it got sorted out. Um, there's a lot of brands out there that aren't allowing you to sell their products anymore on Amazon. And I think Lego had something that happened today as well. So what that means is there's a great opportunity to make money selling on eBay and especially with clothing. I tell you guys, you know, I go to the electronics aisle, I go to the board game aisle, even the book aisle, and I see competition there. And I see sometimes it's slim picking, but I tell you the one part of the thrift store that tends to always be empty and nobody wants to do it because it's hard work but there's a great opportunity is clothing. So we're going to dive into the sold listings and then we're going to start to study some of the sellers that have sold some stuff on eBay. So Amanda, appreciate the love. Empire Jeff, what's going on? OZ Worldwide. So again, guys, if you're watching live, be sure to smash that like button. Let's see how many likes we can get right now. Let's see how strong the Rake and Profit Nation really is. OZ Worldwide says, the only fear to fear is fear itself. I like that quote right there. No fear, just do what it takes to be an authorized seller. Well, that's another way to go about things. I like that, John. I like it a lot. All right. Thrifting Carries has found some awesome clothes yesterday. So let me know what you found today for, for any of the clothing sellers. Let me know what you found recently. Um, I was actually in a Savers today and uh, came across a really nice suit. The brand was Oxford Clothes, O-X-X-F-O-R-D Clothes by Saks Fifth Avenue. And uh, that suit was $10. And I was looking at the sold listings, and it looks like the lowest is probably going to be somewhere between, uh, I would say, 60 to 100, and maybe upwards to 200 to 300. It really depends on, you know how I want to price it and how long I want to wait, but it was a beautiful suit, navy blue, solid color. I mean, it was an excellent item. So really happy about that find. But again, let me know what you found recently. Also found a, uh, the other day I found some Pendletons. I found a beautiful spider jacket. That's S-P-Y-D-E-R. And I found a very nice field jacket by the the brand, uh, ter the Territory Ahead. So I've uh, been definitely finding some really good clothing items lately. So let's dive into the sold listings and uh, start to look at some sellers. All right. Okay, so what do we have 
here. Let's take a look. Let's try to find something that's really nice and then dive into that seller's store. So here's a beautiful item right here. Let's open this up. Uh, this brand is Patagonia, and I'm sure a lot of you folks already know this brand. If you don't know this brand, there is a ton of money to be made. I'm not going to dive into it, but even the bland looking uh, little little jackets like this, kind of like the so it's kind of like a little sweater uh, pullover. This is a one fourth zip, do really really well, and this sold for fifty nine ninety nine by a seller called Vintage in Velo. Top rated plus, 1800 feedback. Uh, the title, I like it, Patagonia Men's. I don't know what the better sweater means right there. Uh, large. This is something that I like to do as well, and I'd be curious if you guys do this. When I put the size in my title, I like to put the abbreviation and the full word as well. So if it's extra large, uh, you know, I'll type out extra large and then put XL if it's double XL. Um, typically I'll put two XL, the number two XL, then XXL. Uh, I feel it just gives you a better chance for a, uh, per, a buyer to find your item just depending upon what they're typing in. So I like the title. I like the picture. The main picture is clean. It looks like they just put it on a, on a wooden floor, which works. You know, you don't have to go out and buy a backdrop. You don't need a dress form mannequin. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can get creative and take a really good picture. So that looks clean. They folded it up nice with the arms and everything. Um, let's see. They, they, they didn't do free shipping, which is fine. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Let's see. 100% feedback. Very good. Looks like they have a store, which is another good thing. 30-day money back. So... I believe if you want to become a top rated seller, uh, there's different criteria that you're going to have to meet. And one of them being that you offer 30 days uh, money back uh, refunds, which I believe. Now, I do see that they offer a 20% restocking fee, which, which may apply. I'd be curious to know, do you guys offer a restocking fee in your uh, eBay business? I'd be curious to hear what you folks have to say. Right now, I'm not. I'm not offering a restocking fee. Um, you know, some sellers say they do to kind of avoid people taking advantage of uh, returns. Some don't saying that, you know, it's part of the business and it's just a fee that you have to eat. So um, be curious to hear what you folks have to say. Right now, I'm not offering a restocking fee. I used to. Susanna's asking, do you do best offer on everything, Steve? Uh, right now, I am. I'm pretty much doing best offer on everything. You know, again, it's it's just a preference of mine. I like having the ability to have a customer tell me what they want to pay. And if I want to accept it, I will. If not, I don't. Um, and I feel it just helps me to keep my inventory moving and uh, to kind of free up space. Susanna says I have a 20% restocking fee. Okay. Uh, somebody asked, I'm reading the comments, does the search al algorithm search your description too or just the title? Uh, I believe it's the description. I'm just assuming. I don't know 100% sure. Uh, but I'd say if I had to guess, I'm assuming that the, the eBay search engine is sophisticated enough to search for keywords in the description. I would assume so. So let's keep moving down. Only three pictures. I would have liked to see more maybe six or seven pictures that might have been a little more helpful to the seller, uh, to the buyer. But I mean, look, it's still sold for $59.99. Here's the item specifics. Very, very important to always fill out the item specific. Super important. It's going to help you to be found in the search engine for buyers to be able to find you. Uh, you are bidding on an excellent condition, Patagonia best sweater pullover, men's large. So the only thing that I would recommend is is to put the uh, measurements in the description. Now, you know, four or five months ago, I would have said, you know, horrible description. It's way too short. You need all this text. You need all these, you know, all this other information. But nowadays, I do something similar. Like I'll literally write two or three sentences. Like for example, I'll write because I'm I'm listing everything on my iPhone. I would I would literally write. You know, up for sale is an excellent condition. Patagonia sweater size large will ship quickly and safely. Thank you for looking at this listing. And then I would put the chest measurement, the length, and the sleeves. Um, because you do know that nowadays most of these customers are 
searching and finding you through the mobile device. And I believe once you go over, I don't know if it, I forgot if it was seven or eight hundred characters, uh, it's not even going to show it on the mobile. So I think keeping it short and sweet is a good thing. Now that's one thing that I'm experimenting with. Um, but really, the only thing I would have changed in this is to add some add some measurements to the. Um, description. I think that would have helped. Let's dive into this store right here, Vintage and Velo, and let's see what this seller is up to. So let's visit the store real quick. Let's see if they've got it all organized. Um, so it looks like they, they never organized their store, which I don't think it's a big deal. To be honest with you, and I'd like to hear what you guys think about this. I know some of you guys might disagree with this, but I feel like when a customer comes on eBay looking for an item, they're looking for that specific item. And then maybe a month down the line, they're going to look for another specific item. And then a couple months down the line, they're going to look for another specific item. Point being is, I honestly don't think anymore, and I used to think this, I don't think that uh, you're going to have much repeat business with clothing. I really don't. And the reason why I say that is, look at all the sellers out there selling clothing. There's a lot of good sellers offering really great deals at good prices. And you know, with clothing, it has to fit perfectly. They have to like the color. They have to like the material. So, I mean, I don't know. I just don't know if a store is that important right now. I mean, I guess it is important to organize everything and make it look good, make it look clean for them to be able to navigate through your store easier. But I really don't think it's a huge deal that they didn't organize their store. Um, you know, I'm sure it has some effect. So if you're going full time and you have thousands of items, I'm sure it's affecting your bottom line somewhere uh, to some percent. But I don't think it's a huge, like I don't think it's going to make a 40% difference in your business or even a 10% difference. All right, let's see what the comment section is all. Let me see. My daily nap time, so I'm going to go lay down. Uh, I've been watching while I fall asleep. It's peaceful and learning some rake and profit in my sleep. Brooke, I'm going to sing you a song while you go to sleep, okay? Now rest your head on the pillow. I'm just kidding. Uh, Sally, I agree. I don't think anyone looks through a store. I use the categories to help me organize myself when setting up sales. That's a great point right there. When to sell clothes in lots. If you have a clothing item that is the same size, like maybe you have like four or five Brooks Brothers, uh, you know, all size extra large, I would lot them up. I think it would be a good idea. So typically I'll lot things up if it's the same size. Um, but if it's not the same size, I typically don't. You could also experiment with lotting up similar sizes with off brands. Like you could maybe do a lot of like Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger, uh, American Eagle with Aeropostale and do like a lot of five button front shirts, all size large or whatever. That might be a cool little lot idea right there. With combined shipping offered, I get repeat business with clothes. Excellent point right there. I don't... How do you set up the combined shipping? It's it's been a while since I uh, since I offered that, and as you guys know, I just got my eBay store back up and running. I don't know how long I've been doing it again. Probably three three or four months now. About that, and uh, really happy with my results. If you guys want to know how I've been doing, uh, feel free to ask, and I will share it with you. Account settings, uh, but that's a great idea right there, and I'm glad you guys brought that up. That's definitely one of the key takeaways that I've learned so far during this show is. Offer combined shipping. I think that's a great idea. All right, so let's go through this person's store. You want to know what? Let's go back. I don't even want to go through the store. What I want to do is I want to look through what they've sold. Look at this bike they have for sale. Holy mackerel. I want to see what they've been selling. Let's spy on the competition to see what is actually selling. All right, so there's that Patagonia jacket. That sold the 25th. The 24th, it looks like they sold a uh, Mavic cycling fleece. That was a best offer under 23. Hydraulic brakes, interesting. Wow, I can't believe they sold this for only $19.99. This is another Patagonia item right here. This is a T-Snap pullover fleece right here. Wow, they sold that for $19.99 plus $8.99 shipping. I would have definitely shot a little higher for that. Um, it looks like they started it off at an auction and, and that's one of the, the, the drawbacks to doing auctions. When you do an auction, you know, you're really limiting yourself in my opinion. I feel like the, the, one of the, the benefits to doing an auction is, you know, you run the, the, the chance of having a bidding war, two people want it and they just keep bidding it all the way up. 
Um, but really, you've got to find that one specific person who's willing to put in that bid and then wait for the auction to end. Most people, as you know, the whole the new business model now is everybody wants it now. When somebody sees something they want, they want it yesterday. They want it quick. Um, I've been experimenting a little bit with auctions. I actually just sold a uh, a rotary phone today. Nothing big. It sold for like 18 bucks plus shipping. Uh, but it was an auction. I'm trying to think. What else have I sold recently on auction? Uh, I sold a Hermes tie the other day in auction because it wasn't selling by it now. But I, I definitely think I undercut myself. I don't know. I just... I think auction is good for someone who can get a lot of volume of clothing, for somebody who can get clothing very cheap. So, you know, if you could pick up suits for sub five bucks, you know, I don't think it's a problem starting it, you know, $19.99 auction plus, you know, buyer pays for shipping because you're going to keep things moving. If, if you're doing everything $59, $69, $79, dollars buy it now – with suits, you know, it's it's going to sit for a while. It's it's going to take a little while for items to move. So I also want to say I do think there is a strong correlation between sales velocity in one store versus the eBay algorithm pushing your listings out. I can't prove it, but the more I sell, it seems like the more I continue to sell. I don't know if that makes any sense, but if I lower prices and get things moving, it seems like even higher price items start to sell. It's really, really weird, but think about it from eBay's standpoint. They want their items selling. They want their items. They want to collect their 10, 12% fee, and what better than to reward sellers that are helping to keep items moving by reducing the price or just offering great uh, service. So, uh, yeah, there's a Patagonia that sold. I probably would have went a little higher. Oh, wow. This is a nice little jacket that's old. 69, 69. Interesting choice in number. Oh, here's a very nice item. So it looks like this person's doing a mixture of auction and buy it now. I, I actually just sold a Eddie Bauer leather jacket the other day for, I think I sold it for $59.99. I ran an auction as well. Um, again, auctions are one of those things where if you start it really low, there's a good chance that if somebody buys it, they're going to get it for whatever you started it off at. I found that to be the case. Unless it's a super, super popular item, really rare. Like if you get like a, you know, one of those rare Ralph Lauren polo sweaters with the big bear or like the bear skiing. I mean, you could run at an auction and it's going to go all the way up or like a Mario game or something like that. Uh, but, you know, like an Eddie Bauer leather jacket. I don't know. You're playing with fire, but you don't know, you know, what their business model is. Maybe they want to keep their items moving. I never use auctions for clothing. Minnesota vegan girl. We got a vegan in the house. That's what I like to see. So I've actually been falling off of my vegan diet a little bit. I'm staying vegetarian, but I've actually been introducing a little bit of dairy into my diet. Not drinking milk, but I've been having a little bit of uh, cheese and a little bit of uh, – what else have I been having? Eggs. So I don't know. The rap song was sounding good, then Steve cut it. Uh-oh, the rap song. Anyways, guys, 77 people watching live right now. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching live. Looks like we got a lot of people who want to learn how to make money selling clothes, or maybe you already are just looking for some motivation. So really glad to have you guys here. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to get more videos. This guy or gal is selling a lot of Patagonia stuff. Here's some uh, swim trunks that sold for $19.99. Oh, here's a great brand. You guys... Be on the lookout for this brand right here. The brand is Dale of Norway. Typically, you're going to find little uh, metal class buttons. Uh, but this is a very, very unique, odd-looking uh, sweater um, brand that you'll come across. Dale of Norway. Typically, you'll find this in sweaters. Uh, I've found this brand probably, I don't know, three or four times over the years. This brand can make you some great money. So it looks like this seller, Vintage in Velo knows uh, his or her brands, which is pretty cool. Uh, awesome brand. Let me show you the tag real quick. So this is a bolo for you right here, Dale of Norway. I'm a reducitarian. <laughs> uh, I'm plant-based too. I don't like calling it vegan. Let's see. All right, so let's keep moving down the list. And I'd be curious to know, how are you guys doing so far this month? I want to know. Let's have a, uh, let's have a little 
uh, boasting contest or a motivational contest. Let's see, uh, how are you guys doing so far uh, this month on eBay and Amazon? Let's share some numbers to help motivate some people. And not to brag, not to you know, overly boast, but to just show people that you can make money on eBay and Amazon. Let everybody know right now, and if you're watching this after the live, uh, after after it's live, you're not going to be able to see these comments, but I'll shout out some numbers. Let me know how much have you sold so far this month on eBay? What are your sales this month on Amazon or Etsy or Craigslist? Let us know. Let's motivate some of the new folks out there. Uh, funny story, actually, it was at the post office uh, yesterday, and uh, I was uh, looking for a large flat rate box priority because I didn't have any. I just ordered a whole bunch more off of USPS.com. And uh, this guy came up to me, and I don't know. We started chit chatting a little bit about, uh, you know, how to ship items out cheap. And I was I was giving him tips on how to ship, and I told him, you know, one really good tip is to always check the FedEx Smart Post prices because a lot of times, if you can't fit an item into a flat rate box, uh, you can save a lot of money shipping by Smart Post, and you can even drop it off at USPS as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, but we started chit chatting, and we started talking about. Uh, eBay and, and and making money online and all that and uh, I don't know we became friends and he was so intrigued he was so intrigued by the fact that I was going to thrift stores and I was making money online and I had a I had a YouTube channel and, and the point I'm trying to make is you know there's a lot of folks out there who who really can't believe that we're making money doing what we're doing you know selling clothes on eBay he was fascinated by that you know going to garage sales or hitting up thrift stores or flea markets or estate sales I mean it's crazy so let's motiv motivate some folks. Uh, let's see. We got Brooke Hayes, my 60 day. Big shout out to Brooke. Glad to have you here. You're freaking awesome. Oh, looks like I just got a new message from somebody on eBay. Shall I read the message I just got on eBay? Let's see what it is. All right. And I'm going to shout out some numbers. So I got a message from somebody regarding my territory, a head jacket. <laughs> and this is why, you know, I love you guys. I'm going to tell you guys right now. I love each and every one of you who are watching my videos. But don't send me messages through my eBay store. You don't believe how many people send me messages through my eBay store and say, you know, hey, Steve, thanks for, you know, making the videos. I have a question for you. And they're asking questions through my eBay store. And I don't get mad. I don't get upset. But it's like, you know, if you're going to ask me a question, message me through Facebook. Message me through uh, you know, email or through YouTube. Don't message me through my eBay store. And the funny thing is I just got a message from somebody. Hey, Rake and Profit, I watch your YouTube videos and I was wondering if you would look at my items I have for sale and tell me what you think I'm doing the listings right. I will, crazy, blank, blank. I'm not going to read out your name. I'll look. I'll, I'll hook you up, but don't message me through eBay. Anyways, uh, TY Hipstar, $2,000 on eBay, $2,300 on Amazon. Zyre Bar, $1,600 eBay, just shipped to FBA yesterday. Wow, congratulations. Miss Beauty, $1,300 on eBay. Bryce Smith, $734.75 so far this month. Getting excited. I get excited too. I'm a pineapple. <laughs> That's a great name. I'm a pineapple. $183 Amazon FBA, 280-ish Facebook bidding wars, 200 eBay. Wow, what's Facebook bidding wars? My 60 day is 9,800. Congratulations, Mark J. Dash Sweezy for my full time Amazon over 2300 in the past month. Sally Walker, 3900 on eBay. Wow, holy moly. So you guys are rocking it. Um, I'm going to open up my eBay and I'll let you guys know what I've done so far. Uh, my 60 day average is I've sold 90 items for $6,357.67. So you guys are freaking rocking it. You guys are killing it. Congratulations. Uh, we got 88 people in the house. Be sure to smash that like button to show some love for all these hustlers out there. Zion Barr, Mr. Ray, can you give me a ton of motivation with your videos? Appreciate it, Zion. Anytime. Uh... What is my Amazon sales so far? Let me see. I'm going to check my Amazon sales right now and release that to you. My Amazon sales so far for the month. And I'm going to just, I'm not trying to boast or brag, but I've, this is my best month I've ever had in history with Amazon and eBay at the same time. So I'm pretty proud of myself. Today, 11 sales for $248. And for the month, I am at 
on Amazon at $9,523.46. And that is over how many products did I sell? 501 products for 9,500 and change. So um, pretty cool, pretty excited about that. Let's keep moving down, guys. Just wanted to motivate some people to know that it's legit and that you can make money um, doing this. So hopefully that motivated you guys. So this guy sells a lot of Patagonia. All right. Wow, check out. Let me make sure that this is still doing a screen share. Cool. Check out this uh, cycling jersey. If you guys are ever at the thrift store, always go through the sporting section, the uh, athletic section, and look for bicycle jerseys. Now, it's kind of hard to explain which ones to look for. Obviously, if it has like Cannondale on it or Specialized or like a really awesome uh, – cycling brand on it it'll do well if you find one from like the usps like if you have a post office uh cycling jersey that can do well also uh check this out klein 70 dollars four bids 70 bucks so uh cycling cycling jerseys can make you some really good money let's get off the seller I'm, I'm getting bored of looking through this seller right now let's move on to another one what else do we have here okay Wow. So I've sold a few of these before, Affliction items. I've never sold an Affliction leather jacket, but this is another spectacular brand that you can pick up to make money with on eBay. The brand is Affliction, A-F-F-L-I-C-T-I-O-N, Affliction. Uh, definitely an awesome brand. Check it out right here. Very popular. The t-shirts even do well. The button front shirts do well. Look up this brand. <sighs> Brooke Hayes, is it true you can link your eBay store to Poshmark? Um, I'm not sure. Yes, Cannondale is an expensive brand. Thanks for the videos, man. You keep me going. Bryce, glad to uh, be able to add value to your life. So this is definitely an awesome brand right here. I wish that uh, more sellers provided uh, measurements. I mean, look at this seller, MK Bear 12, only three feedback. Let's see what this little guy is up to. <coughs> So this is an aspiring eBay seller. Only three feedback. Somebody new who's trying to build up the ranks. Looks like they've got some good stuff. Let's see what they've sold so far. So they've sold a vintage Griffin Full Face Youth ATV uh, Motocross BMX helmet for $69. Uh, an Affliction item. A G-Shock. Holy mackerel. This guy's got some good stuff. Wow. Look at this. Vintage 1960s. Uh, JFK sunglasses. Very interesting. All right, let's go back to some clothing sellers. Oh, this is an awesome brand. I actually just picked up a pair of these, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday because I was at a Goodwill and I read, I ran into a new reseller. I made friends with a new reseller. His name is Seth. And I used to always see him over at Goodwill scanning books. And, um, we ended up chit chatting. Actually, he was talking to another guy and he's like, holy crap. Is that rake and profit? And I'm like, oh my God. We started chit chat and having some fun. And uh, we started talking. And uh, I became friends with this other guy, Seth. But uh, yeah, we were over there chit chatting. And I was I was sharing with him uh, that the diesel pair of jeans that I picked up. Diesel is an excellent brand. Diesel, diesel, diesel. D I E S E L. Diesel is one of those brands that can make you really, really good money. Now, there's going to be a different name associated with uh, uh, different diesel brands. Like this one's the Viker. I know there's uh, a couple various models. So you just want to look up diesel, the waist size, and the model. And then you can price it accordingly. But uh, it's not uncommon to sell diesel jeans for you know 40 to 60 bucks. I like how you called him little guy. He only had three feedback. Um, let's see. Just reading through some of the comments. Does anyone here use QuickBooks? I use GoDaddy Bookkeeping. That's how I keep track of my cost of goods and my profit and for tax purposes and all that stuff. Okay, so I was just reading through some of the comments. Uh, who is this seller? So here we have another top-rated plus seller. Let's spy on the competition right now. Let's see what this seller is up to. So this seller has 807 items listed. 
looks like they have a lot of various items from women's jeans to men's jeans to sweats and hoodies and handbags. Let's go to the sold listings and see what they have sold. So those diesel jeans sold for $42.99. The model was Viker. Looks like they've got some Levi's items, BKE, Lucky Brand. See, for me personally right now, I'm really trying to sell clothing items for like 25 to 30 plus, like even more, like $40 plus, just because it's just not worth my time lately to mess with 10, 15, $20 items, unless it's just something that I have laying around the house or it's a quick flip. Uh, I'm really not trying to mess with clothing items that are going for 10, 15, 20 bucks anymore. Uh, but that's just me. You've got to find your own business model. You've got to find your own price points, what, what you're comfortable with. All right, so just kind of scanning through to see what they're selling. A lot of lower end stuff right here. Anyways, let's keep spying on the competition. Oh, here's a very nice, check out this nice V-neck sweater by the brand Prada. This seller is currently away until September 8th. If you make a purchase, there may be a delay in processing your order. So for anyone who ever sees this and is wondering what is happening, if you have an eBay store, you can actually put your store on vacation mode. And what that will allow you to do is keep your store open and people can buy it, but it'll give them the notification that if you buy it, you're not going to be able to have your order processed until X, that date. And what this seller decided to do, Trebecca underscore market decided to go on vacation, maybe to the Bahamas, maybe to Italy. Who knows where Trebecca went? I'm going to take a look at Trebecca's store to see what they're selling because the more they're selling, it's probably a better vacation. But they went on vacation and uh, they sold this item. It looks like it's sold, uh, I think it was today it sold and it's not going to get processed till September 8th. So let's see if this seller is happy with that. I have a feeling that a lot of sellers aren't going to see this message even though it's like bada bing, bada boom right in front of your face. Um, but yeah, it's always interesting. I'd like to know guys, do you if you go on vacation, do you put it on vacation mode or do you just end all your listings? So Mr. Sadie's agreeing, saying $20 minimum for me. I really shoot for 40 or 50. So Mr. Sadie, big shout out to you. Appreciate you leaving a comment. Anyone else sourcing from Marshalls, by the way? Um, yeah, I go into I go into Marshalls and I source, I, I source a lot of shoes, socks, accessories over there. Uh, the clothing items, you know, there's certain items that you could find and you could sell them seasonally. They do really well at certain times. But for the most part, I typically find that the, the Marshalls clothing is overpriced unless you're bundling it with coupons and uh, discounts from like raise.com. Uh, but there's definitely opportunities at Marshalls. I can tell you that right now. And each Marshalls is going to have a different opportunity. I mean, today I was doing retail arbitrage all day. I went to Walmart. I went to Target. I went to Walgreens, I went to CVS, I went to, where else did I go today? Um, I did go to some, I did went to a Goodwill, I went to the Salvation Army, and I popped on a lot of items. So, I mean, you got to go into these stores, you know, don't be scared to walk into Toys R Us or Michaels or Barnes and Nobles, um, Walmart, Target, there's so many stores out there. Big Lots, I went to Big Lots today and popped on a few items. Uh, although it was outside of the clothing arena, of course, a lot of toys and stuff like that. Uh, the opportunities are endless. You know, you don't have to just stick with, you know, thrift stores. Obviously, if you're doing clothing, the best place for you to source is going to be a thrift store. My favorite thrift store for clothing is Goodwill and Savers, Salvation Army. Uh, but if you're looking to sell other types of items, like I said, there's retail stores. You know, you can source from garage sales, from flea markets. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but I sell a lot of books. I remember when I was hanging out with Yong, retro aficionado in California, he had an antique booth and uh, we went to his antique mall and I ended up sourcing like 50 books, bought it off the owner. He had it uh, in his little uh, antique area and I uh, got a great deal and made a bunch of money. So, you know, the opportunities are endless. There's so many places you can go to source. You know, people were mentioning Facebook groups. You know, you could source off Facebook. Uh, you could source off Craigslist. You could source off of OfferUp. You could source off of eBay. 
<coughs> to sell on Amazon. You could source off of Amazon to sell on Amazon. You could source off of Amazon to sell locally. You know, there's Alibaba, there's wholesale. There's so many opportunities out there. It's absolutely amazing. So, all right, let's spy on the competition a little bit more. So this seller is uh, selling some pretty good stuff. I believe this is the same seller, right? Are we under this person's store? I'm not sure. I'm getting confused. But yeah, there's so many items out there to sell, guys. I mean, look at this. This Joseph, I, I can never pronounce this. Abo? I don't know how to pronounce it. I used to always call it Abid. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, this brand right here doesn't typically do that well. But look, this item sold for $118.95. Check out this puffer jacket, $51 by Marmot. Here's an Armani item that sold for $49.99. Here's a brand called Embellish. Best offer under $99.99. Studio Dartison. I've never even heard of this brand before, so I'm going to open up this link right quick. What do we have here? So I never heard of this. Here's a new uh, a new brand, Dartison. I'd be curious to know if any of you guys ever heard of that brand before. Dartison. Very interesting. There's the tag. See, you know, you learn something new every single time you research. Every single time I research, I learn something new. So let's see what the comment section has to say. Would be funny to click on a subscriber by accident. I've actually done that before. Funny thing. The hotline of FBA sucks. Are you talking? Are you talking about trying to get in contact with support? Yeah. Good luck. Uh, at Ross, if you watch certain items like Columbia at Ross, often they price the item higher than the price tag. I then ask the store manager about it and often get those items for a shirt price. Very cool. Yo, from Scotland. Love the videos, man. So Scottish picker. Appreciate it. Older is hotter. Trust me these days. Uh, show... Show the youngins are getting out there too. <laughs> I haven't been buying a lot of Ralph Lauren because they tend to cost too much. So, you know, when it comes to the brand Ralph Lauren, you've got to find the right items. You know, a lot of people say, you know, I'm going to pass up this brand. I'm going to pass up that brand. But you shouldn't pass up fully any brand because there's always, you know, some type of item within that brand that does extremely well, even the low end brands. So don't X out a brand completely in its entirety. Study the sold listings and learn what items within that brand are selling the best. All right. So if you guys have some questions, I'm going to just open up the floor, do a little q and I actually have to finish shipping some items out. I have uh, four items, four more items I have to ship out. I've got a uh, – I actually sold a DVD. It was a DVD about 9-11 that I sourced for four bucks, sold that for I think 18 on eBay. So I don't mind selling uh, DVDs a little cheaper, you know, under the $20, $30 mark because they're so easy. You snap a few pictures, and with the app, it literally takes two minutes. Throw it into a bubble mailer, and, you know, bada bing, bada boom, the customer is going to get the product soon. Uh, I've got a rotary phone that I am shipping off. I've got a lot of four. I don't even know what they are. They're like laundry detergents that I picked up for 3 bucks each, sold them for 50 bucks. It's not a laundry detergent, but it's – I don't know, it's some cleaning product, and uh, I have one of those Rosetta Stone uh, Italian, um, teach you how to speak Italian disc application, things that I sold for, I think, 40 or 50 bucks. So I got to get things uh, shipped off, but I just want to answer a few questions, see if you guys have any questions and add some value to you. <clears throat> I got banned from Amazon selling legit DVDs. Wow. Wow. I'd like to hear the story behind that. It's risky. You know, even selling DVDs on Amazon is risky because all it takes is probably one person to say it's not real and then you're gone. So it's scary. Uh, Steve, what do you think about the new Amazon restrictions? Is it worth the trouble in $1,500 to get gated? I guess you could say uh, in the new restricted brands. Um, you know, I definitely think that more and more brands are going to be restricted on Amazon as time goes on because, you know, we are hurting their bottom line, a lot of these brands. Uh, so in terms of should you pay the money, it really depends on, you know, how heavily your business depends on those brands. You know, if 40, 50% of your business is relying upon selling Nike and now you're restricted, 
yeah, it's going to make sense. But you know, if it's going to cost you fifteen hundred dollars, and I don't know why it would cost so much. I don't know if it's some type of license or you have to buy a certain amount from a wholesale to get the invoices. I'm not really sure how it all works with the clothing or whatever you're trying to get ungated in. Fifteen hundred dollars is a good chunk of change. So, uh, you know, you may you may want to have to you know think twice about spending that much money. We got Jason T. Smith in the house. Man, did you uh, wash that magic marker off your forehead yet? <laughs> <laughs> have you hung any artwork on your walls yet? Jason, I tell you, I, uh, you know, you motivated me and I've got, I'm, I'm actually looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Jason, man, you'd be so proud of me. It's like, you know, it's like a father looking at his son and saying, son, proud of you. That's how it would be with you and I, if you were at my house, but, uh, I did it. I did it. I hung up some, some, some paintings. Do you still publish eBooks? I don't publish eBooks anymore, but I still make money each and every month from create space, uh, Kindle and ACX, which is audiobooks. So send me pics. I want to see, Oh, Jason, I'll send you some pics. <laughs> uh, found a Tromboli men blazer, pure wool, but there was no size or label inside the men jacket. How can I find info before listing on eBay? Um, I would just provide the measurements. That's what I would do. Uh, I would provide the measurements and uh, you should be good to go. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Can I buy a lot of shoes with boxes from a department store and sell on Amazon? Yeah, you can sell shoes on Amazon. They've just got to be new and you want to make sure it comes with the box. So you can definitely do it. Uh, hey, Steve, do you plan to scale up in the future or do you just enjoy sourcing individual items at your own pace? Uh, well, I mean, I am scaling up my businesses. I mean, like I said before, I'm having a great month on Amazon. I'm, I'm going to cross $10,000 this month on Amazon FBA for the month. Um, this month on eBay, over, I think I'm over 5000 for this month because last month I only did like a 1000 or so on eBay. Uh, I was working my way back into it, and this month I've exploded. Granted, I did sell a camera for $1,800, so that number is a little skewed. But uh, yeah, I mean, my eBay business is growing. My Amazon business is growing. I think you're probably touching on, you know, do you want to scale with like private label and wholesale? Yeah, I will eventually. Kind of moving at my own pace and uh, trying to juggle a couple things. I mean, I really have four main priorities in my business. My business is made up of eBay, Amazon, Green Room, and YouTube. Those are my main businesses right there, how I make money, uh, mostly coming from reselling, obviously a little Craigslist and a few other side hustles as well. Uh, but those are my main four things that I'm focusing on in, in my life in terms of you know bringing in income and uh, based on the lifestyle and the value that I want to add and in kind of the direction I'm going. So uh, scaling, I will. I'm sure I'll scale into other things, uh, private label and wholesale probably being the next things that I go into. Uh, Brooke Hayes says, I love your videos when you list clothes live. They help me so much to get more excited about doing clothes. Calling shirts baby and sexy cracks me up, helps a ton. Hey, there's a lot of sexy clothes out there. I tell you right now, a lot of clothes that can make you some really, really good money. So I'll be sure, Brooke, to do some more live um, shows where I'm just listing. I don't find it that amusing for you guys, but if you enjoy it, I'll give it to you. Dude, I can get you on another side hustle. I want to talk to you on the phone. Well, that's why I do these live shows because I'm going to be honest with you guys. I have very, very limited time. So I hope I don't offend any of you guys if, if I can't give you a call or I can't respond to your messages on Facebook. I'm really at the point now where I'm trying to leverage myself as much as possible. And these live shows are the highest leverage things that I can do to be able to connect with the most people. So um, we could definitely try to connect, Dash. Uh, but it's it's just my schedule is super, super tight as of late. But I appreciate you for sure. How do you sell NES cartridges? Do not know if they work or not. The buyer says they do. They're vintage. Um, so how do you sell cartridges? Do not know if they work or not. Um, I mean, you're going to have to take a risk if you're going to if you're going to buy the items without being. I, I, I really don't understand that question, to be honest with you. I mean, if you buy items, you're going to have to test them out, bottom line. Uh, it's good to have an NES, Super NES. Uh, you got to test the items out. How do you ship them? Typically, I'll bubble wrap and poly bag them out. Uh, poly bag them, ship them out in like a bubble mailer or a box, depending on what I am selling. Post more live listing videos. I definitely will. <laughs> 
would you would you consider yourself a YouTube celebrity? Absolutely not. No, I'm just a little fish in the sea when it comes to YouTube. Uh, the reselling community is pretty small in 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 retrospect. So, how do you scout shoes with no boxes or barcodes? Uh, typically, I'll put them on eBay um, and just try to look them up the best that I can. But typically if I'm going to sell shoes on Amazon, it's always going to be with a box and, and a barcode. So I don't know how a lot of folks do it. You know, I know some people they'll sell shoes without boxes on, on Amazon. They'll somehow find the listing, which probably is a challenge in itself. And then they'll poly bag it and put it in like a, like a plain box and put a uh, little note in there saying we were missing the box or the box you know, it's easily damaged, so we want to put it in a better box, or we're going green. There's all these things that people put in there to be able to sell it without the original box, which I believe you're not supposed to do. That may be against Amazon's uh, guidelines. I'm not sure. Uh, Brooke says, Steve, sometimes like the live listing is that some people need to see someone show them how to do the simplest things to make it click for them. I enjoy the company. I list alone. Plus I learn. Yeah, I agree. That's definitely a good point that you made right there. <laughs> uh, Ruby says, I just started posting clothes. We'll see how that works out. Ruby, I want to give you some really quick advice. List, list, list. You have to list a good amount of items up. You have to keep listing. Don't just list three, four, or five items up, Ruby. Uh, it's going to take some time uh, to get things moving. Typically, probably two to three months to get things moving, but try to list a couple items each and every day and just keep going, keep pushing. And take time to make sure the pictures are good, include the measurements, make a good title, a good description. It doesn't have to be a long description, but include the measurements, that's important. Uh, make sure to fill out all the item specifics. If you can offer free shipping, that may help a little bit. It's not proven. But uh, yeah, definitely keep it up. Is eBay Global Shipping Program the same as FBA? Uh, no. <clears throat> the eBay Global Shipping Program is, well, let me explain it this way. When you sell an item internationally through the Global Shipping Program, instead of you fulfilling the order and shipping it directly to the customer, let's say they're in Italy, you would actually ship it to a fulfillment center in Kentucky. So you'd only be charged shipping to uh, Kentucky and then they would, which is eBay, they would fulfill your order, uh, you know, doing all the uh, customs forms and all that, and they would fulfill it from, from Kentucky to, let's just say, Italy. And you would be off the hook from, from the shipment from Kentucky. Once it, once it hits Kentucky, you'd be off the hook. So if it doesn't get there or there's an issue, I believe it's on them. So FBA is when you ship products directly to them, they store it, they fulfill it, and then they ship it out. You're not sending it to them to store. You're just sending it to them for them to kind of be the secondary shipper in a sense. Uh, I listed seven things, got a projector screen for the background. I think it looks great. Nice work. I used to sell high-end brand shoes, and they move really well. I agree. List, list, list. So anyways, guys, I got a roll. If you guys enjoyed this show, be sure to hit that like button. It looks like we got 56 people who took the time to hit the like button. So I'm watching. I am watching the like button right now. I want to see that like button go up. 57. Somebody hit it. Who else is going to hit it? I'm waiting. I'm watching. Don't leave me, don't leave me hanging right now. That's it. That's it. Who else? Hit it. <laughs> All right, guys, but I appreciate you guys watching. If you found value in this video, of course, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. Also, if you want a free book, we've got a book down in the description called a hundred amazing items to resell. And that's a book that I've actually created with some of my partners over in the green room at greenroomuniversity.com. It's a membership site that I run with a couple guys where you get more advanced training, more love, more firsthand um, coaching and stuff like that. Um, but we created a free book that we're giving away, 100% free, called 100 Amazing Items to Resell. And that book will give you 100 items to be on the lookout for. But not only the items, I mean, it'll share with you what to buy, what to avoid, how to inspect the items. It'll show you a picture of the item. It'll show you the best item to buy within that bolo in itself. And there's a hundred of them. So I'm telling you right now, um, if you're looking to make money with clothing, because there's clothing items in there as well, including accessories and outside of clothing, get that free book. It's in the description. First link, just hit it, rakingprofit.com forward slash 
100 to number, amazing items, rankingprofit.com forward slash 100 amazing items. Get that free book. But yeah, I appreciate you guys you know, watching this video. Hopefully it was able to help you out and add some value to your life. If you're in a position where you're like, you know, I just don't know if this works. I don't know if I can make money on eBay. I don't know if I can make it work with FBA. I want to quit my job or I want to make an extra 200 bucks. I want to tell you guys right now, it's possible. It is possible to make a couple hundred bucks extra a month. It's possible to make an extra couple thousand. It's possible to do over 10,000 a month. It really depends on what you're looking to do and what your goals are and how hard you're willing to work. Because a lot of people don't realize this, but you get what you put in. If you put in five hours of work, you're going to get five-hour results. If you put in 50 hours a week, you're going to get 50-hour results. If you put the systems in place, if you take the time to build a real business, you're going to get great results. So it's possible. I quit my job over three years ago. I was working at the Cracker Barrel. I was delivering pizzas. I was bringing in two, three hundred bucks a week. And uh, you know, I've been part-time to full-time. Over the three-year period, I haven't gone back to work in a regular job. I've been an entrepreneur, making money on my own, self-made since then for over three years. So if I could do it, you could do it. Be sure if you're just coming in now, rewind the video because we were shouting out a bunch of numbers. People were sharing how much they were making, and that will be able to inspire you to make it happen. So go do it big. Be sure to subscribe. Be sure to smash that like button. Be sure to get the free book below in the description. It's the first line, 100 Amazing Items to Resell. But until the next video, keep on picking and making that money, and I'll see you guys soon.